Hi friends, today we are going to look Doppler ultrasound velocimetry. In that, we are going to look introduction, Doppler of uterine artery, Doppler of umbilical artery, Doppler of middle cerebral artery and Doppler of ductus venosus. Okay, let's get started. First is introduction. Doppler flow velocity waveforms are obtained from arterial and venous beds in the fetus. Blood flow velocity is measured by Doppler ultrasound which reflects downstream impedance. Doppler velocimetry has been used to interrogate arterial Doppler and venous Doppler. In arterial Doppler, the umbilical artery, middle cerebral artery, uterine artery and then venous Doppler, ductus venosus and umbilical vein. Let's go deep into arterial Doppler and venous Doppler. First is arterial Doppler. Arterial Doppler that is umbilical, uterine, middle cerebrate waveform are helpful to access the downstream vascular resistance. The arterial Doppler waveform is used to measure peak systolic volume, peak diastolic volume and mean volume. From these values, SD ratio, pulsatility index PI equals S minus D by M, resistance index RA equals S minus D by S are calculated. Next is venous Doppler. Venous Doppler that is ductus venosus umbilical vein. Parameters that provide information about cardiac forward function. Cardiac complaints, cardiac contactivity, after lot. Then fetus with abnormal cardiac function show pulsatile flow in umbilical way. Normal UV flow is monophasic. I think you have some idea about arterial Doppler and venous Doppler. Now we can dive deep into arterial Doppler and then venous Doppler. Okay, Doppler of uterine artery. What is the role in Doppler of uterine artery? That is to predict Pregnancy induced hypertension in pregnant females. According to normal thing, the diastolic notch disappears by 22 to 24 weeks of pregnancy. For abnormal cases, this diastolic notch persisting beyond 24 weeks of pregnancy. The significance is it indicates the patient developing pregnancy induced hypertension in future. In this graph, you can see the diastolic notch actually in the left side that is the systolic uh, that peak and then the right side is diastolic peak in that you can see one notch that is the diastolic notch which uh, the significance is we can see pregnancy induced hypertension may develop in future okay next is doppler of umbilical artery the umbilical artery differ from other vessels in that it normally has forward flow throughout the entire cardiac cycle. During systole, heart will actively contracts and during diastole, heart will passively contracts. This is told according to the resistance. If resistance increases, what will happen to the blood flow? Blood flow will decreases. And if the resistance decreases, what will happen to the blood flow? Blood flow will increases. As the gestation advances, placental impedance decreases and diastolic flow increases. How it is? As the pregnancy advances due to progesterone, the peripheral vascular resistance will decreases. So, the diastolic flow will increases. This is for normal pregnancy. That is, in normally the systolic remains same and the diastolic flow will increases. So, what will happen to the SD ratio? SD ratio will decreases. Here, the diastolic flow, as I told, diastolic flow increases due to decrease in peripheral vascular resistance. What will happen to the denominator? That is, the diastolic blood pressure. It will increases. So, uh, SD ratio will decreases. That is, less than 3. We can look next into what will happen to uteroplacental insufficiency and or this uh, pregnancy induced hypertension. This placental impedance increases, diastolic flow decreases and SD ratio increases that is more than 3. I think you will uh, understand how this will happen. In uh, PIH the resistance will increases. So, what will happen to the diastolic blood flow? Diastolic blood flow will decreases. So, what happened to the denominator? Denominator will decreases. 
so the ratio will increases that is more than 3 next we can see the different graphs in this umbilical artery flow velocity waveform first is the normal one second uh, second uh, third and fourth are abnormal cases that is reduced end diastolic flow and next is absent end diastolic flow then next it is reversed end diastolic flow we can look what are this how it is formed and its management okay now we can look one by one each waveforms first one is the normal one if you know the normal one then only you can differentiate the abnormal one so the normal umbilical artery flow velocity waveform are as given here the blood flow in systole is here and blood flow in diastole next is the reduced end diastolic flow you can see here this is tall, but the radio, uh, the diastolic flow is reduced here. It is seen in uteroplacental insufficiency or pregnancy induced hypertension, where there is increased resistance of vessel. As I told, when the resistance increases, the diastolic flow will decreases. So it is the reduced end diastolic flow. Next, the absent in end diastolic flow. Look there, the systole is there, but diastolic flow is absent here. Uh, what what is the management for this if the period of gestation is less than 34 weeks we can correct it by steroids for fetal lung maturity and frequent fetal monitoring but if crosses 34 weeks more than 34 weeks but uh, it is better for better to do the termination of pregnancy next is the reversed end diastolic flow here the diastolic flow got reversed this happens in very high resistance. The normally blood flow will flows from artery to heart. But in this case, uh, the blood will flow from heart to artery. So the reversal will happen. So this is the reversed end diastolic flow. So what is the management here? If the period of gestation is less than 32 weeks of gestation then we can try to correct it by steroids for fetal lung maturity and frequent fetal monitoring and also we can give mgso4 this is not only really for convulsion but it will act as tocolytic agent and neuroprotective agent uh, it won't get cerebral palsy like this things it won't come if we give mgso4 if the pregnancy period of gestation crosses the 32 weeks, then it better to do the termination of pregnancy. In this, the mode of delivery in patient with absent end diastolic flow or reversed end diastolic flow, it's better to do the C-section, cesarean section. The anesthesia to be used is general anesthesia. Next is Doppler of middle cerebral artery. It is done in two cases fetal anemia and hypoxia or IUGR that is intrauterine growth restriction. In fetal anemia, peak systolic velocity can be seen. For significant anemia, this peak systolic velocity will be less than 1.5 multiple of meridian. Here you can see the peak systolic velocity that is less than 1.5 Next is hypoxia or IUGR. This will cause the redistribution of blood to brain that is the brain sparing effect. The less resistance in MCA and more blood flow in diastole. What will cause for this? This will increase in end diastolic flow and a pulsatile index. Here you can see the increase in end diastolic flow and a pulsatile index. Now we can look Doppler of ductus venosus. The waveform is biphasic and normally has forward flow throughout the entire cardiac cycle. The first peak reflects ventricular systole the second peak reflects ventricular diastolic filling and these are followed by a nadir doing atrial contraction termed the A wave. In this picture, you can see all these things. First is the ventricular systole. That is the ventricular systole. And next is the ventricular diastole filling. And next you can see the A wave. 
the ductus venous drop doppler anomalies reversal of airway flow in the ductus venosus this finding may be identified with cardiac dysfunction in the setting of severe fetal growth restriction in this picture you can see all these things that is the reversal of airway flow okay what are the umbilical vein doppler anomaly pulsated flow is seen in the umbilical vein then undulating umbilical venous waveform below the baseline indicates tricuspid regurgitation here you can see all these things let's go to summary till now what we have discussed we can see in this summary first is the umbilical artery next is middle cerebral artery and next ductus venosus and then umbilical vein so in umbilical artery what are the changes we can see reduced or absent or reversed end diastolic flow what is the pathophysiological basis failure of villus tropoblast invasion next is the clinical significance increased resistance in fetal placental circulation iugr and preeclampsia can cause next the middle cerebral artery what are the changes increase in diastolic velocity decrease in sd or pulsatory intakes next pathophysiological basis dilatation of cerebral vessels what are the clinical significance brain sparing effect in response to hypoxemia ductus venosus changes increase doppler intakes or absent or reversed flow that is afa av will be there then pathophysiological basis is increase central venous pressure for clinical significance fetal acidemia then for umbilical vein increase doppler index pulsatile flow then for pathophysiological basis increase cvp or decrease cardiac complaints then clinical significance is fetal acidemia Hope you understand all this Doppler ultrasound velocimetry. Thank you.